Danny Lexham here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Ryan Walsh. Um, feels a bit strange not to say British featherweight champion before your name, but obviously we'll talk about that in due course. Um, you're getting ready for a massive fight. The biggest fight that you've had certainly in a few years, probably since the European title shot. It's the final of the MTK Golden Contract Tournament at Featherweight against Jazza Dickens. As we talk now, just over two weeks away, two and a half weeks away, how's preparation been going? Yeah, very good. Thank you, Danny. Oh, well, um, you can still call me the British champion. Politics <laughs> don't change that. You can't lose a title. You can't give a title in a, in a boardroom. You can't lose one in a boardroom. Not in my book. I'm of the old school, so... I was never going to wear care. That's how I got my title because somebody didn't want to fight me and I would never go that way. I, I've said I would fight. I told Reese Moore's train I would fight and this pandemic has put spanners to the works on a lot of things. I never had a dare to fight, which is very frustrating. Um, the British title is my bread and butter. It has been for the last five years. Why would I wear care? It can't be the British and world champion, which is the mission. So, yeah, don't want to go on to a negative with that, but you can still call I still see myself as the best fighter in Britain and no one's no one's proved it otherwise and the last man to do it is two weight divisions above so <laughs> Lee Selby you're referring to that yes um, without meaning to kind of dwell on it are you, do you feel quite hurt by it by the board especially because as you said you've served as their British champion for a long time and ultimately it's them that have taken the belt away yeah well I've been thinking about this and I'm gonna, you're going to hear this a lot so I'll say it to you first the board have lived up to my expectations. Where they surpassed my expectations is when they took a guy who was my mandatory challenger, signed contract on paper to fight me, and made him now the mandatory for Reese Small, Jordan Gill. That's where they surpassed my expectations. I expected to be stripped. I was obviously I'm dead against it. Um, I'm not with that at all. It's wrong. It's simple as that. Anyone who doesn't think that doesn't know me, doesn't know boxing. Um, it's wrong. I've never held that title up. I've been held up with it. Isaac Law pulled out of me after six months preparation. And in, in boxing, not many, I don't know if people know this, unless you're really well, if you're actually lucky and you're sponsored and you've got backup plans and plan B or whatever, you can be in a position to train six months out in Tenerife or wherever you are and lose that money. The board never gave me any, I was never reimbursed for that. So that was the first mandatory that said no. The second mandatory was John and Gill. I had a signed contract. The only mistake we made, we didn't put the 90 days clause in it. So he then decides, what I'll do, I'll have a tune-up in Peterborough and then I'll go and fight this Mexican. And then the rest is history. So he fought the Mexican rather than fought me and the Mexican done what I, I'm more than confident I could have done. It's um, stylistically, it was, it was proof for me. But that's all to them. They can, you know, that's the way this is, this is the way it's written. They can have that. It, it adds more to my fire. It definitely annoys me. But it's my expectations of boxing, the British board, everything. So it's, they've, they've just um, surpassed it by putting Jordan Gill as the mandatory. Before we move on from it, I don't want to rub salt into the wounds, but it would be remiss of me not to ask, who, who do you fancy to win that mandated fight if it happens between Reese Mould and Jordan Gill? Um, stylistically, Reese is going to cause him problems early on, but I see Jordan Gill win on points. Um, it's, Jordan Gill's a good fighter. He's long... He takes a good fight. That makes him a very, very good fight. I don't think he's ever been beat at 130. So he didn't. He wasn't just beat by nobody. What annoys me? And I'll get this one out with Jordan Gill, and hopefully he's watching it. And hopefully someone tells him about it. You say you had food poisoning. You say this and that. You say that. Rematch the guy. You've not even talked about the guy. Anyone who knows anything about boxing knows that that guy's all wrong for you. And every time he comes and makes 126, he beats you. So... You know, at least give the guy the props he deserves. He beat your fair and square. There was nothing to do with your, your, your poor tummy. I'm not buying that. I, I didn't buy it at the time, and I'm not buying it now. So, but as far as that fight goes, I think Reese Mull's a 12 and 0 novice pro. He's very willful. He'd been bread and butter for me. Absolute bread and butter for me. You want me to vacate against a guy that I could only wish could. I, I wish all my fighters fought. Look, you know, my next opponent. He's so different to him for a start. He's got boxing IQ. He's got experience. He's a southpaw. And um, yeah, Reese Moore, why would I Why would I not fight him? I fought the last one who was 12 and all appalling. He was the southpaw. And as British champion, I, I, I liked fighting these undefeated guys. I liked fighting these. And Reese Moore would have been that. And I, I wanted to be the one to take Jordan Gilzar. But 
the Mexican beat me to it. Now, you mentioned Jazza just there. How hard, if at all, has it been to find sparring to really replicate his style? Because he's a compact southpaw. He's quite aggressive as well. You don't usually get that style of southpaw. You're normally more long-arm, tricky stylists. True that. Yeah, he's also still got the southpaw mold of... He will shoot first, but at the same time, his best work comes when he lets you make a mistake. He had wood out on his feet. I mean, I watched that fight not long ago and um, really impressive. He done really well in that fight. He's um, To get the sparring for him, we've touched so many different people, but you can't replicate him now. He's got a funny, jerky style, a unique style, like you say. He's aggressive, which is rare for southpaws. But um, I think he'll have more problems finding someone for me than I have for him. Because I've got my brother as well who can do everything. So he's been good and I've been, I've been so, like, I'm grateful for the sparring I've had. I've had so many different people and they've all gone so far for me, even if they're not so far. We had a guy in our gym in, in Tenerife, Artem Horayan, he's, he's a big boy and he, he was going so far. And I just think the, the, the sparring I've had, John O'Carroll was decent. Um, again, my feeling after sparring John was, well, Jazz is different and Jazz is more experienced and Jazz, you know, it's been, yeah, I suppose it has been difficult, but we tried to touch as much as we can. I think the dimensions is probably the hardest thing to find someone as compact as that yeah. with that aggression. Like you were saying, yeah, it's difficult. You've done some with um, Louis Lynn recently, haven't you, who um, who switched southpaw for you? <laughs> yeah, he did. Louis was good. I'd done six with Chris Book first, and then he jumped in for his oh, six. Yeah. And um, he was very, what was the word? It was really intense. It was good. He was trying to, he felt like he was trying to prove something to himself rather than me. And, and I enjoyed it. It was something that I expect from Jazza as well. This is what I've been lucky with. All right. I might not be able to get the perfect fit for Jazza, but I've touched things with all different sparring partners. Chris Burke offered really good work with his left hand and he's fast and more probably size and weight around the right weight. Whereas he was quite big. I mean, he was big and he was really, really intense and up for it. It was good. And I've had the likes of Alex Dilmangi, who's a really good safe ball boxer. Really good on the inside as well, Alex. Um, John O'Carroll for his work rep brands. And yeah, it's been good. Yeah, it's been really good. For sparring. And some of that camp was spent out in Tenerife where you spend a lot of your time training. You were just telling us off camera about that. Just tell us a bit more what, why you go out there, first of all, and then why you had to come back a bit earlier than planned. Tenerife's the environment that has brought all the success to it's added to our success because without Graham I wouldn't even been in that position Graham's some trainer to be able to you know trust us though he comes out as well he was out what happened was we've done three weeks in Tenerife which is our home away from home and it's unbelievable because me and Liam like a lot of people know him people watching this might not know we have, we're just boxers we're just boxing Liam will play football on the weekend but when I when I cannot play football on the weekend I'm not good enough now I can't get in <laughs> But Liam's, Liam's still good enough. He's still got the engine. And um, we got to Tenerife to get rid of all them distractions, which is non-boxing. Because Liam's running, running a couple of businesses as well at the minute, the ice, ice cream business. So he, for us, when we're there, it's just soul boxing. You're 10 minutes away from the gym. And the people there are unbelievable. I, I love the gym. I say this a lot as well. It's a connect, we're, we're a gym in the Canary Islands. And the Canary Islands and Spain, they don't really get on. There's a divide there. So right. the gym's run by a Spanish man with a Cuban wife. His best fighters are Armenian, English, and African. It is the perfect boiling pot. It, like it's nomad boxing club. It's brilliant. And the Providano gym, I can't say enough for him. And it's a place where I feel I go there to prepare, but it was different this time. The hotels were shut. Um, cause there's another gym we use right near for our cardio. And um, just a bit different, but it's nice. It's the weather. It's, it's the feel there. And then I, from for one fight with Belotti, after training in Tenerife for six months, I come back to England and done for Belotti. I've done the last eight weeks. And we don't do camps, but we, it's, it's prolonged time before fights, how much time you get. And this one's been, I couldn't have asked for any more time. I asked for 10 weeks, I've had about 30. So I've been lucky with that. I always said to, I said this to MTK, you give me 10 weeks, I'll fight any man. And it's it's nothing to do with, for me, the 10 weeks is all to do with making sure I prepare my, my body right because making weight and things like that, that's the hardest bit about boxing. Edge will fight and I love it. That's, that's my favourite bit. 
So as far as Tenerife goes, we've done three weeks and then we went to Marbella. The plan was to, to come back from Marbella, go back to Tenerife, then come back and finish up in England, which we always do. And it, and it was not brought, don't fix it. And that was the idea. But when we were out there, the kids go back to school. Which they just started this last week, I think they started. And it's a case of, do we wait to be locked down over that? You know, you talk about when you come back, you have to self out. Just loads of nonsense. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff that just weren't, you know, weren't helpful to us and didn't like the hotels were going to open and that weren't correct either. We had to go down when we wanted to use the track because Tenerife is a very unique gym. It's it's on a football stadium, underneath a football stadium with a track outside. You've got the mountain to use. It's it's a very, very good place to go and prepare for any, for any sport, never mind just boxing, but for us. And um, this time, you had to go and book your times to go on the track. Just felt weird, whereas usually you just walk out the back door, do your own thing. This time, not. It was really strict and, yeah, not very good, but different. And hopefully in time, you remember this time, I was like, thank God that's gone. I can't wait for this to all just disappear. And it goes quick as it come, but I hope. Fingers crossed. Now you'll have to forgive me for losing track, but how many children do you have now? Is it four? I have five, but we have five. 15 on our site. We, I live next door to Liam and I live 20 yards away from Michael. Got a tiny little bit of land in the, in not um, like ten miles away from Cromer now. So, so who's got the most? You've got five. Liam's Michael. got four. Michael's four. got six. Michael's I feel Michael's six. in a rare. He even told me that. He said he, he beat me to set. I always thought I was gonna have seven, but it's crazy. It's um, I basically had two families really. My first three were all together when I was a baby. I was only twenty. We had three within three years. Then we had a seven-year gap. Finally got rid of the push chair and then made the mental mistake of having another two. But it's a mistake. I'd, I've made five mistakes and every one of them are brilliant. So I take them all the time. How has it been during the lockdown period when you were at home, obviously five children in the house and you weren't able to have a fight date to look forward to either? It must have been challenging at times. It's been the best. I've talked to Liam about this all the time. Usually I come home and I'm coming home now and I get an hour where it's just me. And it don't feel right. Whereas I trained all the way through lockdown. I've been in a very lucky, privileged position, said bless, but I'm not religious, to be able to go to the gym as normal. And um, when they've done the full lockdown, we probably let we were probably at the gym between five and twelve days. Me and Graham can't look at it between us. It's five or twelve. And I was doing my normal running with Liam, coming back, sparring in the back garden. It was it was and my my biggest pleasure in the lockdown has been the time I've had with the kids. You don't I don't sit down and play games and no. I'll watch them. I'll be sat. I'll come back from a run and I'll see two. They're all in little groups. So between us, we've got 15 children. Yeah. They're all from 14 down to three, I think it is. So they're all got their little bunches and there's two or three will play together. The girls are quite funny. It's the boys that get me. We've got two boys, me and Liam, who are, um, I think there's only about seven months between them. They're brilliant. Caesar and Ryan. So yeah, so different. One's a little skinny one like Liam and mine. He looks like a little silverback. The white silverback, he's brilliant, and they're such a good team. You're not going to turn into like a group of cult leaders or something, are you? All living on the commune, I could see it happening. You've got this is the, yeah, well, yeah, this is the Walsh cult. Um, but we, we're lucky because again, during this lockdown, we we was with a certain a group of friends, and we've all been together from dot one. My brothers actually went abroad just as the lockdown happened. They come back from Thailand. But it was with their friends and their families. So we've been so lucky. I reckon there's a group of 50 of us the whole time, from the start of this to what we're in now, who have been around each other the whole time. So it's not been a, a cut off thing. We've had the people around us and we've had loads of good things happen during this. Like we've got a friend. He's more than a friend. He's like, he's as good as family. And he's a builder. And my mum, Liam's in the process of building. He helped build all these houses as well that we're in. And he's, in the, he's just nearly finished an annex for my mum. Without, without this, he wouldn't have had the time. So he was here for, he's been here the whole way through. So he's back to work now, obviously. I'm sure you've been working on that annex for about three years now. Yes, yeah. Look, well, this is it. He's I remember finally, interviewing yeah. Liam about two, three years ago. Yeah, and he was talking yeah, about how it had to go yeah. on hold for a bit. Yes, well, this is it. This is, you, you're, this is all written for me. And when good things happen out of bad things, I'm always happy because I think, well, that was the reason. And, yeah, it should be in soon, and they've been working on it, so it's good. Just talking about Liam, I think um, John O'Carroll, you mentioned as well, that you've been sparring. His recent yeah. defeat 
to Maxi Hughes. Not great for him, but I think it reminded people of just how good Liam Walsh still is. Yeah, I agree. I said it to everyone. I think Liam Walsh cost John O'Carroll that loss. And I don't blame... Liam made Maxi look not that good. Quite ordinary. Because Liam is that good. Liam is a world level. He's all yeah, right. He lost the tank. We talked we talk about the tank a little bit. And the fact of the matter is, Tank's going to be one of those special champions if he can keep himself right. He's he's he's... If he's mentally right, he could be a multi world world champion. He already is a multi world champion, but he could be three divisions and have super fights. And he's, he, I think he's going to prove to be elite because there's world class fighters and there's elite. And I think he's a little bit better than world. He'll prove to be a little bit. The Pedraza win looks so good when Pedraza goes and does 12 and, and holds himself well against Lomo. So, but when Liam comes back there into British level and European level, that's probably where you'll think, well, you'd be able to see it. And I think. I don't blame John O'Carroll and his team and people looking at that Maxi fight with Liam and thinking, well, that's a decent fight, a decent name, that will progress us. And look at what Liam did. Liam had two years off and fought nobody. That first comeback fight was nobody. I fought him years ago and he come, he, he held on longer than I expected, but realistically, that was nothing. Liam has hard as far as. And I've been sparring him my whole life. We have hard as far as and what happened there. And he wasn't happy with that. He wasn't happy to do that. He doesn't want to do that. But he seems like he's got that horrible tag, Liam, of who needs him. And I'm so happy. The one thing I will say about the British board, they've made him the mandatory name, which is not... And when, when Tennyson vacates, I won't be surprised. And I don't blame him. This is business. And it's, Liam's not good business for most of them, is he? So it's not good business. He's, you know, it's, it's weird with Liam. I, I talked, I'm going to say what I... Yeah, I talked to Liam today. I said... Look at John O'Carroll. John O'Carroll fights for a world title, then ends up in a pair of with Quig. Fair player, tip my hat to him. Anti Yard fights Kovalev in the world title, gets knocked out, has a good fight, and then he comes back on this BT show the other night and has a decent good fight there. Liam Walsh loses two years. Two years, and they forgot about it. It's, it's a funny business. It's, 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 it's what it is as well, so I'm not complaining about it. It's just for me as a boxing fan, I'm thinking, how can that be? Because I know he's training with me the whole time through. And your piece that you've done was brilliant because it shone a bit of light that it wasn't Liam being awkward. I think this game's funny. It's a, it's a funny and not in a ha-ha way. Funny in a, if you first fit, so if you go with the system. And, and I don't know, I'm not... Them, the British board stripping me my towels at all, but I won't complain about it. I'm not crying about it. I'm not being negative about it. That is what it is. It's the truth's the truth. And we just don't fit, I don't think. <laughs> Unfortunately, I think we're in a... We'd have been better off in a different time where, where men were ready to fight men. Well, you are you fit with MTK Global, which I think has been very important for both of you. Definitely. That, you know, Definitely. they brought Liam back to prominence. They've conceived the Golden Contract Tournament, which has brought you even further prominence than the British title did. You know, the first two fights were arguably, you know, well, the second one maybe not so much because you were up against a very slippery opponent. But the first one was certainly the best fight of the quarterfinals. And now you're going to be in the final against Jazza, which a lot of people are considering the British fight of the year so far. Yeah, it's nice. It, it's got all the potential for that, and it? it's got the ingredients. I've said it, and I'll say it again. The only, the only time Jazza has been beat is by world class opponents. So for me, that's 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 what I'm asking. That's what I want to prove, you know. And more than anything, I want to know good I am. Beat Jazz, I know I'm good. <laughs> Simple as that. I beat the Cuban, I know I'm good. I beat certain fighters, I know I'm good. And um, learning to lease out has helped me a lot. And I wanted that fight. I asked for that fight. I made that fight. So, if and I've tried to make other fights, especially in Britain. These British fighters, though, they know. They know who they are. And I've tried to make them fights. And I'm cheap. You know, I've always been cheap because I just want to fight. I've... Uh, I didn't have many amateurs and I hadn't had a lot of pros and I wish I'd had another 30 pros because I do feel the more experience you get under the lights, you just get better and the only way you can get better is fighting the best and fighting often. So Let's talk about the final because we haven't gone into detail on that yet. Just tell us, first of all, what you feel about Jazza Dickens as a fighter and then where you feel you hold the advantages over him. I think Jazza Dickens as a fighter and a man, is, I respect him. Mainly I respect myself. I told him this as well in one of our interviews. So he's going to get the best version of me. Anything less, I lose. It's very similar to the Cuban for me. You've got a guy there who is fringe world-class, could be world-class. Only time will tell. He's got plenty of time to prove his point. I ain't got no time. I've got no time to prove my point. And um, I've, I, 
I think I'll hold the advantages in experience. Experience. And that's a funny one because he's had, I think he's had as many fights as me, not more, but experience of life. I, I, they'll tell me that I'm old and this, and I've got this last five years of doing something and I've never been out of the gym. And I just think I hold the advantages because I'm, I and me and Liam are quite rare in the sense of, well, I look at a lot of different boxes and I've been around enough gyms to know how much we hold advantages in things that you can't see. We had a dad who was well, well past it, well in front of other other dads and other people in the sense of mentality. I come into boxing with with with, with a mentality that set me apart. That's that's that's, that's my advantage, my mentality. Why have I got that mentality? Out and out to my dad. Out and out to my environment. We're all products of it. So I think my 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 advantage will be my mentality, my boxing skill. Um, I think my I don't know if I'm much bigger than him. I don't know. I don't know about size, but on the night, I feel like I'll definitely be be. I should. I, I, yeah, I, I fancy I'll be the stronger man. The the, the interesting one is going to be he's the fastest because he's fast. His, his single punches are good, and that that's that's huge to this fight. Who can be the quickest? Quick the foot, foot and hand. So whoever holds them advantages, it's hard to beat them. And I think that's what I've got to prove. You see, another thing, what I should have started with here and what we'll be saying a lot when we get to the press conference is this. I can talk. I love words. Scrabble and countdown are my favourite games. And um, actions speak louder than words. And that's what it'll be. The man who can put their actions, you know, really do something. You know, I, I, my intention is to let my actions speak I can do it with my, my mouth. But I get bored of hearing, hearing myself, even sometimes other people. So I'm just going to say this. Actions will speak louder than words and I'll let my actions do all the talking I need to. You need to get into university challenge. That's the proper man's <laughs> test. Yeah. You can get into double figures on university challenge. You've made it. It's countdown for me. I just want to play Liam. I don't want to play anyone else. I want to go into countdown because we play a lot and that's other people picking the letters and that's we've written letters we've tried but for some reason we can't get on I, I, I wish I could keep I'd the dream alive play. it's not over no no young this time. For countdown anyway at the moment I don't know you want to see some of them players are some brilliant players and, and they're getting younger there's, there's a guy what's his name Edward he's un, unbeatable he was unbelievable I bet he weren't much over 30 and he's I think he's their job he had quite a normal day. Do you think this guy's a genius with words and maths? Because you've got maths and... Oh, yeah. And, course, uh, yeah, maths around. Yeah, but the maths, it, he's, some of his maths is insane. I'll bear it in mind. Um, talking about Jazza, did you fancy him to get through the semi-final against Lee Wood? Um, size of Wood, you thought Wood might do enough to nick it and look at the scorecards as a criminal, really, because that fight wasn't even close. On the night, I did something like eight two, seven three. It I was, thought it was clearer than the scorecard suggested. Oh yeah, it was clear. And, and there was a point in there where McDonald gave him a respite at a point where he was fighting and banging his chest. And fair play to Wood, but if I was Jazza watching that back, I said it on the night I was doing the commentary, and um, Jazza should have been furious because that's a point where you can't step in to break the action. The only thing that breaks the action is a knockdown or a stoppage. For some reason, McDonald decided to break the action it was strange for me I'd have been fuming looking back because these bonuses are decent bonuses looking at five grand yeah. man I, I think the, the promoters all the promoters could learn from that UFC well, do weren't you quite look. disappointed after the McCullough fight that you didn't get the bonus I remember you saying well, something about it in red we well, just didn't he didn't want me to get that bonus and that's what I tipped my hat to he because lesser men would have given me that bonus <laughs> they said right they'd have stared down they'd have stared their pants but he wouldn't have fair play to him I don't know if he had a bet that he was going to do the distance in that fight, but something kept him in there. And it was round nine where I knew I, I could, that was the time where I knew I'd missed the opportunity because he's, he, he showed his toughness there, really did. I was I was impressed with his toughness. Not so much impressed with his tactics, but you got to do what you've got to do. It's good for you. Work to your strengths. Good stuff. Well, it's always a pleasure. I'm glad we finally got to get together now you've got something to actually talk about which i know is what yeah, you're, you're yeah. waiting for so that's brilliant um look forward to the fight just over two weeks um it's going to be british fight of the year i think i don't see how it can't be but um yeah looking forward to it and best of luck thank you danny i uh, appreciate your time as always and i'll always be grateful that when you've done that piece with lane it was massive
And thank you to these boys, if anyone can see them, and these boys that do everything. I'll see you Danny. MTK Global and Geezer's boxing for anyone who can't. You know, thank you. Oh, yeah, is that boxing. backwards? Is that because it's reverse? No, 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 you is can it? see it. I'll just make sure in case anyone missed it, but I don't think they'll miss it the second time. So yeah. all good. <laughs> I made sure I got it then. Yeah. Thank you, Danny. Cheers, mate. Take care. Cheers, mate. Thank you, mate.